Um, hi everyone watching the Paperback Bookshop's YouTube channel. Uh, my name is Ronnie Scott and I'm a writer and this is my book, The Adversary. Uh, and I was, um, this month or next month, going to be doing an event at the Paperback, which I was really looking forward to. It was going to be an in-conversation and it was going to be about The Adversary. Um, but as you know, probably we're all under, uh, under quarantine and under COVID lockdown and isolation right now. So... Um, we're not going to do that right now. Um, again, I was looking forward to it and I was really excited to be asked um, to come and do a reading for the YouTube channel, um, which is really exciting. So the book, The Adversary, uh, I'll set it up really quickly because I won't read from the very, very start. I'll read from like page, it's page 45. Um, it's about a narrator and his best friend, Dan, who he lives with in a house. Um, and they really like each other when we've met when we when we meet them at the start of the book, but also they have probably exhausted each other and they're probably at the point where they need to go out and find other influences for their friendship to survive. And so the book is the story um, of their friendship finding that way to survive. Um, yeah, meeting other people, meeting romantic prospects, meeting other social prospects as well. Uh, the narrator is very reluctant. He does not want this to be taking place, but it's taking place anyway. Um, and I'm about to read a, a scene that's set at the Fitzroy Pool um, because it is a social location where people spend a lot of time um, uh, observing each other and touching each other by design or by accident. Um, and that's that's what happens in this scene. It seems like a good thing to be reading during this lockdown. So I will get straight to it. And I don't think that you need very much more context than that. Before I'd let my membership to Brunswick Baths expire, a trainer had written on the whiteboard, Remember, summer bodies are made in winter. It sounded like an old saw trotted out by some Scandinavian detective, waiting for the lake to thaw and divulge its many bodies, creating a grisly wealth of summer overtime. Now though, climbing the bleachers at the Fitzroy pool, I saw it had a troubling meaning of a different kind. While I had been imagining the Scandinavian detective, other boys had been taking the advice as it was meant girding themselves against the risk of sagginess and scrawniness and readying their bodies to greet the sunny world. Dan and Lachlan were already up there on the bleachers, perched on towels and gazing at me through their sun-glassed eyes. Neither of their towels looked particularly beachy, but instead seemed lifted from some fancy hotel in the same thick royal green as their dressing gowns. I couldn't imagine how warm and lovely it would be to cover myself in these towels in dead of winter, nor how awful it would be to do this after exiting the water on a too hot, windless day, sweating and chlorined and sticky with sunscreen, squinting up at the gym complex that hulked over the pool. I nodded to them, saw a space on the tier below them, reasonably man-sized, and made my way towards it. To spread a beach towel on these bleachers was to perform an art. It required a keen eye for towel-shaped opportunity and no undue squeamishness for disadvantaging others. As I dropped my own scrappy blue-green spotted towel and kicked at it to spread it, the shape beside my towel rolled over and revealed itself, inscrutable behind its own pair of sunglasses, these ones dramatically large and bug-eyed. I paused mid-crouch. Hey, I said. He paused too. Hey, Chris L said. I looked up at Dan and Lachlan. We'd already said hi to each other, but I was getting into the groove. Hey, I said. Hey, Lachlan said. My sunglasses were always cheap, and the last ones I'd bought had broken several months ago. There was nothing left to say, and nothing left to do, but take off my shoes and shirt so as to complete the sense of exposure. There were more gaps on the bleachers than it looked from below, but it was hard with noise and dense with sizzly bodies. I was lucky to have found a space at all. Only when the American was halfway up the bleachers did I realize my terrible mistake. As if to reintroduce the idea of his Americanness, he was holding two burger shapes in Lord of the Fries wrappers, obviously having left the bleachers in order to pick them up. His towel draped off his shoulders in a pretense of modesty. I held my hands out, palms up. Sorry. Hey, no friends in the towel game, he said. This is Vivian, said Dan. We've met, said Vivian. Yeah, I said, rolling over and squinting up at Dan. We are friends in the towel game. 
So his name was Vivian, which I vaguely knew was one of those names that was actually old-timey masculine, like Shirley or Evelyn, and only in the present world did it sound slightly deranged. I was trying not to think about my view of Vivian's crotch, which was encased in smooth white trunks that somehow revealed both everything and nothing. Dan was in one of his unimpressible moods. What's the towel game, he said, when it was entirely clear what we were talking about. It was interesting how that idiom, no friends in the X game, was something they must have had in America too, which only made it seem particularly pointless that Dan was pretending not to know what it meant. It's this, I said, and said, Chris L, would you mind moving your towel? Chris L swooped his lenses over the bleachers over the day. I don't mind at all, he said. I smiled at Dan. Thank you, Chris L. And when he'd done so, I moved my towel, which made it kind of bunchy, but the towel and I were both still dry, so bunchiness was fine. There, I said, and Vivian set his own towel down next to me, stretched it out as far as possible, and sat down where he could. I was very impressed with Vivian and Chris L for going along with me, although I was unsure what I had been trying to demonstrate. And that's the towel game, I said, and refolded my legs. Vivian passed a burger to Chris L over my body, causing just a drop of mayo to fall beside my chest. And from there, plot ensues. Um, they return to the Fitzroy pool at one point, uh, towards the end of the book, and between those points, uh, we learn more about towels, we learn a little bit more about dressing gowns, I don't think that we learn anything more about burgers, but we do learn more about these characters, uh, how they feel about each other, uh, how best to treat each other, um, and what they think of themselves, each other, and the world, um, and that's the adversary. So thank you so much for letting me read to you on this YouTube channel, uh, and hopefully we'll all see each other in person soon.